Hi, my name is Jeff Davies, and I'm on the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Team. And today, I'm going to walk you through how we perform the Identity and Access Management Lab, which is part of our OCI test drive day. If you are in a test drive and you have some questions about the lab and you don't have access to your instructor or you're attending remotely, you can use this video as a handy resource to help answer the most likely questions you'll have. So to get started, you need to go to my personal website, which is jeffdavies.org. And as you see, it's a very simple site. You just left click on this Oracle test drive labs and open that file up. And that's going to take you to a GitHub repository where I maintain these labs uh, going forward. So as OCI changes and evolves, because that's one thing about the cloud, it's constantly changing and evolving. Uh, I am working to keep these labs up to date. What I want you to do when you go to this page, is you want to scroll down to the README. And on this link here where it says L100 lab, go ahead and click on that. And that's just going to jump down to the level 100 labs that we have. Ideally, during the test drive, you'll do all of these labs here, all the way down to reserve public IP. You also might want to do the autonomous transaction processing, really up to you. However, we're going to focus on the identity lab for this one. So click on identity, and that takes you to another readme file, which contains the entire contents of the lab. So I'm assuming that you already have a Oracle Cloud Infrastructure account. You have a username, you know your password, you know your tenancy, which is also called your account name. The URL for the console is uh, cloud.oracle.com. And actually that's changed just recently. You can now just go to oracle.com and it'll take you to the same page. And you wanna sign in when you get there. So here's the oracle.com page. Go to view accounts. Sign into cloud. It's going to come up um, and prompt you for your cloud account name or your tenancy name. Yours is going to be different than mine, so use the one that you have in your email. Click next. And this will bring you to the main landing page for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. The first thing we really want to do here is create a compartment. So you want to go to the main menu, click on that. You're going to probably have to scroll way down. And under Identity, there's a section for Compartments. Click on that. Now, your list of compartments should be empty, uh, other than maybe your root compartment. But since this is, I'm using an Oracle instance here, I've got to navigate to my compartment. And from here, we are able to create a child compartment. Now you could put everything in the root compartment, but best practices dictate that you have nested compartments. And you can think of a compartment like a folder on your file system. So it's a good way to help organize different assets, control who has access to those assets, which is part of this lab today. Um, it, it just makes things a lot more manageable. If you put everything just in the root folder, uh, you're going to have trouble at scale. So let's go ahead and create a compartment. We're going to call this compartment demo. I'm a big fan in correctly spelled uh, comments. So it really helps other people that are coming in and working on a team. Put some meaningful comments in there. And you see instantly you have a demo compartment created. So now we're going to move down to managing users, groups, and policies to control access. And Oracle's approach is should be pretty well known to you. You have user accounts. Uh, user accounts can be added to groups, and groups can have security policies applied to them. And using these three mechanisms, you can pretty much control everybody's access to restrict it to only what they need to have access to. So to begin with here, we're going to create a group. 
And to do this, we're going to go to back to identity. We were in compartments. You can click here and go back and, and click on groups. Or you could also take the long way around and go right back right out to the main, oops, right out to the main menu. Say identity groups, you'll end up in the same place. So we're going to create a new group and we're going to call it OCI group. Now it says here you can see no spaces, only letters, numbers. So just name it exactly as I've shown it here. Feel free to use your own naming if you want, but you may get a little out of sync with the rest of uh, my presentation in this lab if you start making up your own names. You are free to do it, but just a caveat there. So we'll create this group. So we're good to go there. See how easy that was. Basically, a group is just a name. It has no meaning on its own. Next, we're going to create a um, policy. Once again, under identity, you can go and click on policies. So now we're going to create a policy. Before we do that, we want to navigate down to this compartment dialog here and say pick a compartment. You see right now it's only showing the root compartment, but take a look, there's a little plus sign there and that means you can expand that. So I'm going to expand it and drive down to my folders and then select the demo compartment that we just created. And now we're going to create a policy. The policy is going to be called Policy Pro CI Group. Notice the use of dashes instead of spaces. No spaces are allowed in the name. And another quick little comment. We want to keep the policy current and now we can type in a statement. For us, the statement is going to be allow group OCI group to manage all resources, except not in tenancy. I want to say in compartment. In compartment demo. Now, this might be difficult to remember. This looks like it's nearly plain English, but it is not. Uh, it is a very formatted, structured language. So what you're going to want to do, if you have questions about doing this, you can go to jeffdavies.org and you can click on the OCI policy helper. So our group here is OCI-group to manage all resources in compartment demo. And that will give you a properly formatted security policy. Just copy that. And then we're going to flip back to where we were. And just in case I made any fat finger typos, which I do quite a bit, uh, we'll pop that in there. As you can see, you can add multiple uh, policy statements and apply them uh, to a single policy. But we only need the one for now. And this statement here basically says anybody in OCI group can manage everything in the demo compartment manage all resources. So we'll say create. And now we have policy for OCI group. So to create a user, we'll go back to identity, up to users. We're going to say create user. And we're going to call this user, user01, all lowercase. User01 for the description. And I'm going to use my email which is the overrode name. Um, okay, so the username is user01. You're gonna log in with this username. It's gonna send you a confirmation email to the email address that you specify. And to limit this, the user we just created is what's called a local user, so it's not federated. So we just click that local filter and you can see there's user 01 down there. Now, one of the things we're going to do for this user that we just created, we're going to click on that account. We're going to say create reset password. This user 
has an account that's created, but the user does not have a password assigned and therefore the user cannot log in. So we're going to say create reset password. We can copy it. We can go ahead and show it if we want also. I strongly suggest that you make a, uh, a copy of this, just pop it into Notepad or something like that. It's a temporary password. We're going to overwrite it here in just a minute. But, uh, you, you know, just saves you a step. Don't lose track of it. So we hit close. I'm going to pop up Notepad here and just paste that in. A little too big. Okay. So that way I can see it. So at this point, if this was, uh, a, you know, a, a, a real user that you would be creating, you would have to find some way to get that password to them, that temporary password. And one of the things that I recommend is that you sign out uh, completely from this account here so that when you sign in again as uh, the new user that you just created, you can do that without any difficulty. Uh, it helps to clear the cache and that sort of good stuff from here in, in your browser. Well, technically, it doesn't help clear the cache. It helps the browser from getting confused. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go check my email. And it's going to give me a link to click. Now, instead of just clicking it, well, actually, I will. So it's user01. See my tenancy there. Or your tenancy name. I'll copy that, too. Which is, now, this is why I copied and pasted the password, because I just overwrote my cache there. Now, when you sign in, you're going to use this Oracle Cloud infrastructure one here. So there's going to be user01 and your password it's going to be that temporary password. So enter that temporary password and say sign in. So now it's going to give you an opportunity to update your password. So let's pop that temporary one in there again. And I'm going to make another uh, just garbage password here. And that's going to be my new password. So I'll pop that into those two slots. Save new password. And my email activation is complete. So that's good. Now I can be logged in. Okay, in the next step, we want to go to Compute Instances. And what we're doing here is we're testing our user account, see what we have access to. So I'm going to say Compute Instances from the main menu. And you can see it says Select a Compartment. Okay, that's fine. And you notice it doesn't show the demo compartment. And it, even if I refresh the browser, which sometimes you need to do if you've just created a brand new compartment, sometimes it doesn't always show up, but I can't select that compartment. Why? Because my user01 account hasn't been added to the OCI group that has a security policy that says this user account has access to the demo compartment. So this is a verification basically that the user security is in place and working because you can't do anything with it. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to come back here and we're going to log out. And we're going to log back in as the administrator. Your administrator probably logs in over here on the right. I'm using Oracle's SSO, so I'm going to come in on using the SSO login. Okay, so now what we want to do is we're going to want to add that user 
let me, let me get to it on the lab here. <clears throat> We're gonna to wanna to add that user01 user to the OCI group. So we're gonna sign back in with the admin account using single sign-on, well, I say single sign-on. We're gonna sign back in with the admin account, whichever way is appropriate for your account. And then we're gonna select our user. We're going to go to groups um, and we're gonna add the user to the group. And so we do that. Really called the easiest way right? so because if you go to identity groups, we go to our OCI group, and we're going to add a user to the group, and that user is going to be user zero one. Okay, hit add, and now that user is in the OCI group. Now we already have a policy defined for that OCI group. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, remember we're signed in as the admin, we're gonna sign out. And we're gonna sign back in as user 01. Get it, our, the password we just reset. that in there okay don't worry about this this is because it's trying to access users and that's not what we want to do what we want to do instead is go to compute instances see we got the root compartment here and expand field. We're going to drill down basically and find our demo compartment, which is right there. And now it allows me to create an instance here. If we tried to create an instance before, we would have received an error message. So we know now how to create a user, to create a group and assign users to that group, and we know how to create security policies and apply those policies to either compartments or the entire tenancy. So we are in good shape and thank you very much for listening and uh, watching this video.